Welcome to We Are Libertarians. I am your host, Chris Spangle. We Are Libertarians brings you all of the irreverence modern politics deserves. Think of us as the love child of the National Review and Mad Magazine. We explain to you what the hell is happening in our world today and how we can fix it by thinking differently. Please be sure to rate and review us on iTunes, like us on Facebook, share this episode with friends, and support us through PayPal or Patreon at wearelibertarians.com. We are supported by listeners like you, so $1 per episode by pledging $5 a month help, uh, helps us grow. We are always taking your questions and comments via email at editor at wearelibertarians.com. If you are new to the program, we catch up for the first 20 minutes or so and then deep dive into analyzing current events and society from a libertarian perspective. This show is for adults by semi-adults, so please be warned, the language is strong and offensive. Joined, uh, I'm joined by my valiant co-host, fresh off of his successful interview with Abdul Hakim Shabazz. Is successful a bit strong? I, uh, I, I, w I was interested to hear what you thought, if it went over okay. Uh, you did great. Did okay? Yeah, everybody else, not, not good. Really? Abdul did fine, as as he'll, he will tell you. He's fantastic. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so if you are listening uh, to this now, Indianapolis, check out uh, Greg on uh, WIBC at 2 p.m. on Saturday. Yeah, discussion um, on social media and the effect it's had on society. Yep. And uh, also with us is Kat. Kat, how are you doing? Hello. I'm doing well, thank you. Uh, it's so nice to have you here. Uh, the other cat is joining us. Mittens just jumped on the table. and uh, Mittens is banned from last episode. Promptly showing her asshole to the cameras as she does every episode. Uh, speaking of assholes, my, uh, <laughs> my little buddy, uh, Jeff Vibbert, is here. Jeff, how are you? I'm doing great, Smangle. Thanks for having me back on. I'm surprised that you would lower yourself to our level of show business now that you're on such a big plane. Hey, for the common man, by the common man. <laughs> Jeff, of course, left uh, the day job and now is working at Barstool Heartland and does a great daily video series called uh, Things You Saw? Pissed. What is it? Things You Pissed. <laughs> That's it. That's it, Cat. Blood. Yeah. <laughs> Things You Was Pissed. Was the water running? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Things You Missed. Yeah. So uh, how do people follow you if they want to watch that? Uh, at the Jeff Vibbert, or you can go to the Barstool Heartland Twitter, Barstool Heartland Facebook. Find it there. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 7 a.m. Uh, now, Kat, everybody follow at Kat and Agnos while we're getting plugs in. You make sure to right, get yours in right. right now, right? Yes. Yeah, Thank so you. She's she's very, uh, she loves attention. Yep. And if then go follow at the Jeff Vibber. If you're watching the video, then you can see Kat playing with her hair. She's constantly. I don't know. Grooming. Weird. It, it's very fun to have uh, her around, but she's very particular about her looks. Yes. Of course. Shallow. So am I. Right. Also, uh, of, of you know, very handsome, uh, Jeff Fibbert. You're looking, you're looking good. You're looking swole these days. I think I'm just gaining weight. You're getting <laughs> all right. I was being nice. You're getting a little fat. That's fat shaming. Chelsea, yeah, that's Chelsea, fat shaming, Chelsea, Chelsea Clinton does not approve. <laughs> you just spiced him. I thought this was a libertarian podcast, and you're fat shaming me. Yeah, of course. I wish my cat would stop fucking with my microphone. Get out of here. The cameras picked that up. Uh, well, you just threw your cat. Call, call Peta. <laughs> yeah. So she's she's caused so, so much problem. So yeah, um, free speech is obviously under the, assault. Under assault, and that's one of the things that we're going to talk about tonight. Uh, we had a case that just took place in Massachusetts. Yeah, Massachusetts. Where Massachusetts, uh, Michelle Carter encouraged a friend of hers to commit suicide. She just has been charged with what? Greg? Involuntary manslaughter, 20 years in prison. But her legal team is going to uh, appeal it because it takes, honestly, it takes the law in a, of involuntary manslaughter and um, the intent, or there is an intent, but the implications of where this leads are huge and enormous so they're going to appeal it and my guess is the appeals court will strike it down um because you're essentially saying that being you know sh what had happened was this is what had happened what was, had happened was <laughs> let's let's back up and give some context what exactly happened in this case yeah so michelle carter young teen she had uh, struck up a friendship online virtual relationship with a guy named conrad roy the third and it was basically just them texting back and forth for a number of years but Roy had been suffering from depression, and at the beginning of their relationship, Carter had urged him to seek treatment. You know, okay. so when they they were first became friends. However, as the relationship uh, got you know progressed, Carter became to uh, she eventually just began to encourage Roy. Um, every time he expressed the desire of to take his own life, she started to encourage it. Right, and was like, you know what, just go ahead and do it then if you feel that way. 
It sounds uh, familiar. Ultimately, <laughs> <laughs> ultimately, Roy called Carter as he sat in his car in an enclosed garage with the exhaust running, and Carter um, did little to su- to lend a hand of support to her desperate friend who had called her and said he was going to be killing himself via right. text message. And so instead, when he called her and told her that he was scared, and she instructed him to get in the back of the car and finish what he had started. That was her last communication. It's a very vivid things to say. Right. Hey. No, that's not <laughs> no, true. No, 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 no. Cat, what is hanging on on the wall of my office? One of the funniest things I've ever seen. Um, not for the faint of heart. There's a little post-it note that's thumbtacked onto the uh, cork board and it says do it period with a razor blade taped to it <laughs> <laughs> given to me by none other than jeff vivard it goes back and forth it goes both and ways. i've like oh, taken yeah. i've like taken it off and pretended to use it to be um funny and i actually almost got myself <laughs> yeah it's so real well, it not only four episodes ago you were telling people to go up the stream not across the river do it like a real person <laughs> I'm never getting a real job. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, so what's really going on is we joke about these things and we're sort of like the first people to find the most, we're right at the cutting edge of what is funny or right. what is edgy or what is right. just starting to become acceptable. <laughs> like This I, uh, is out ahead of the curve and regular society is being introduced to it for the first time. Right. Because yeah. we make these jokes, you do these, you leave little yeah. love notes to Spangle. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Jeff and I... Signs tell of e- affection. Right. Jeff and I tell each other to drink bleach at least once a day. Right. Yeah. But... Uh, it isn't real. But this also, the context of this situation is different. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, if, if Spangle's been in a vulnerable state before, and I've I've given him a shoulder to lean on. Uh, right. You even left him a note, don't kill yourself. Yeah. You tore it out of a yellow legal pad and wrote Thank on you. it. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff's been low, too. He's been eating out of dog bowls and nothing but refried beans for weeks on end, and, you know... <laughs> That's not a joke. Either. That's not a joke. Yeah. The last time he was on this podcast, there was a rant that we were all a little scared, weren't we? Uh, it, it was awesome. It was. It was great. It was great. Just stream of consciousness, letting it out. He felt a lot better after. Needed he did that. It. Yeah. It felt yeah. real good. Now he's in a much better place. And now it's a totally different person. Is that why I have a list of things I'm not allowed to talk about for legal reasons? <laughs> yes. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> Jeff sexually harassed us. Uh oh. Yeah. Natalie Stroanagnos is watching. She says, hi, Kat. Love you. Oh, who's mother. That? Who's that? Oh, it's your mom? mom? Her mom. She must be so proud. Honestly, You're on a libertarian so podcast. No. Hello, mother. Love you, too. Natalie, if you see her uh, trying to brush her hair several hundred times during this podcast, that's your fault. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or at least she blames you anyways. Yes. I like so. to look good on camera. Um, but no, this definitely hits home for me, this whole situation, because... <laughs> As I shared before, and you laugh, I was a part of. I was oh, heavily put it on me. There we go. Yeah, yeah. project on me. Well Projecting. done. No, I was heavily involved from fourteen to seventeen in this like online gaming community. I'm a big. <laughs> no, I'm. You what, laugh. I'm being honest. What game? Uh, Farmville. Please say Farmville. Yoville, actually. Let's be real. Yoville, one of the Facebook games you can talk to other people. Club Minecraft, Penguin. Club. All these. I'm not even kidding. Some of my best friends to this day are. From that community. Did you know, but hang on, did you know Spangle has two Facebooks, one for himself and one for Farmville? I kind of yeah. figured as much. Facebook I games had, in general. No, I had multiple accounts for Yoville. I'm not even kidding. I was I was a billionaire on that game. But anyways, I digress. Is, is, that, is that on your resume? Over. I was little. Okay, anyways, back to the Skills. serious notes. I, so many. Honestly, you should just fucking kill yourself, loser. <laughs> honestly, like, <laughs> no, but so many kids on that, in that Form. online community. Form whatever were so mentally unstable and, mm-hmm. and teenage kids. I'm not even kidding, and it's sad because like we were talking about earlier, you go to those places for like the sense of community, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so many, I knew so many kids from those forms all across the world. I had friends from Syria and everything who just wanted to kill themselves, wanted to do all these drastic things, and people would talk them out of it and stuff. So it was a good place, but it's just interesting to have this go finally go into the mainstream it is and this is society's first introduction to the savagery that exactly. can, goes on on the internet <laughs> yeah the inter- b, inter- knows b is not a place for your you know normie 4chan b random yeah the internet is the wild west it is not even anything Reddit. goes and that's the thing is i advocate for free markets and not restricting society and humanity whatsoever and then there are days i get on 4chan and i'm like i'm kind of a statist yeah i kind of <laughs> think we need some regulation because these people they're i don't know yeah they're a little wild it's like having a society of nieces and i'm outnumbered and i don't know that i like that but i don't know i also feel like there were some more elements at work here as they check the comment stream um, on Facebook to see what the feedback is. In real I wonder time. if anyone's telling us to go kill ourselves. <laughs> right. So many. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. <Yeah. laughs> 
<laughs> but uh, it, it, there need, I think there does need to be. This was a, a such a sensationalized news story. Like it came out of nowhere. She got twenty years. The sentence of twenty How years. How old is she? She's, she's like uh, I want to say she's seven. No, that was something different. I don't know her exact age. I'll look it up. But she's a young girl. Her whole life's ahead of her. Yeah. You know, this just seemed to be over the top to me. Um, let's see. In 2014, he killed himself. So this has been in tri- you know, waiting to go to trial but for a while. But we're just not hearing. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't say her age, but definitely something where it had been a long virtual relationship, they refer to it. And then also it clearly, I, c- I don't want to imprint this on there, but it seems like it was something where he had threatened it and threatened it and threatened it. She eventually just like kind of fell out of touch with him and was wishing he wouldn't keep using this to draw her back in. And then, is the door open? Yeah, go shut the door. Uh. I think the door's open. Oops. So it's kind of like a boy who cried wolf. Or that, or like you know, I don't know. I don't want to assume this, but something where like he was like kept threatening it, and then he was in love with her, and that was the only way he could get her to like respond. Um, Greg's totally thrown off. Sorry. No, but I mean that's that's the vibe I got from the mm-hmm. nature of the text exchange. Yeah, is it something where? Suicide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and so it just got to the point where she was like tired of him using it to bring her back, and so then she just said this. But then when she found out that he actually had gone through with it, she immediately called her friend or uh, texted had texted her friend and was really worried, and that was introduced as evidence. Yeah, I mean, it, it could probably strikes a little bit of emotional manipulation. A lot of times people will take advantage of, you know, suicidal talk just to... It's part of the reason that some people will uh, open up about suicidal ideation is that they want attention. Right, you see it on Facebook. Like, we've had... I had an instance with libertarian brutalism where there was an individual who was, like, real-time cutting themselves and taking pictures. And, like, my first experience with it, like, no one had his contact info while he was doing it in the group. And so, like, I went on a mad search to find anyone that knew him, like, and to get them to call him or contact him. And then, you know, the next day, oh, he's fine. He just had a rough night. And it's like... (laughs) That was my first brush with it. And I thought, this is just madness yeah you know and it's interesting because like i said this is like we were saying it's just now getting introduced to the mainstream world if you think about it the online community or just people who communicate more over technology than in person tend to be more you know alone lonely mentally socially isolated socially isolated so of course that's going to make them more suicidal right absolutely yeah stop crying we're not talking (laughs) about you not you buddy But it's just interesting because, you know, to us, this is like for me being in these things and the jokes that we make, that's a normal thing is I've had a lot of people tell me like, oh, I just can't do it anymore. And, you know, you can only talk people off the ledge so many times until you're like, what am I supposed to do? Right. And usually it just doesn't develop to the point where then you're like, I'm so annoyed. Why don't you go ahead and drink? Exactly. Yeah. I feel like in this case you have a millennial world being judged by old people that don't get it like right. you know what i mean and i think it's not even i mean i would say it's like people even like 35 and up yeah no for that sure are just normal. Yeah. yeah like it's nor it's 35 year olds unaccustomed to the absolute brutal nature of the h- most hardcore parts of the internet yeah because it is it is not, that headline like as soon as i saw it i thought oh <laughs> my God, this is going. I'm um, luckily it didn't get the uh, mass outrage of like a Casey Anthony, but I thought someone just took like an archived post on B and then threw it up on, into the Boston Globe, and that is that is the no worst you yeah, can society do. is not ready for that. Mm-hmm. They can't believe that exists, and this and especially this girl, you know, sweet, cute girl. Like you don't expect it from her. Like this isn't the one. You know, you, this isn't a basement dwelling. You know, zit riddled. Cretan. Right. This is like just a girl that would you guys would probably offer a bid to in your sorority. <laughs> yeah. Especially <yikes>. now. <laughs> Careful about the thumping. Um so, on the table. Oh, just gotcha. because of the, the mics. So here's the thing, all right. I have had a long battle up until I mean, I really struggled with suicidal ideation, which is thinking and talking about suicide my entire life. I never would have gone through it. 
I'm much too vain for that. I wouldn't want that to be the thing that people remember me for. You know, like, I, if you kill yourself, that's what people will remember you for. They don't remember that you were a podcast host and much celebrated uh, as the said <laughs> podcast host. <laughs> the vanity of legacy <laughs> is the deterrent to suicide. <laughs> they, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> it's just funny to hear that it said out loud. Uh, that's, that's Not that it's cool. funny. It's just it's funny to hear it talked about yeah, in that not manner. That, not that your mom would walk in and find you. It's that... Uh, well, that was... That was there's the three things i mean it's it, it, i i don't mean it in like a public sense i mean it is like that's the memory that your family's going to deal with for your entire the rest of your life they're going to have to a, have that conversation with people right. it's like, a selfish I, thing to put on your family it's a very selfish thing to put on your you don't give a shit you're dead you know but to do that to other family members i would never want to do that i never wanted to be found by somebody like the, you know a, even a police officer who deals with that stuff every day, I wouldn't want to do that to somebody. Like that's a scarring thing. Right. And you know, in the in 20, 2016, 2016, I sat down and I was very serious about it. It was a, it was last year about this time, and I wrote a suicide note and I got halfway through, and that is the thing that made me realize that I will never commit suicide because once I started to write out all the things that mattered to me. That's when I went, why would I ever kill myself when I have so many great things going on in my life and so many people that I enjoy and so many relationships and projects and things that I care about? So I've struggled with it my entire life, and uh, I've never really talked to other people about it. It isn't something um, people talk about at all. You know, we had a friend who tried to go on a suicide tour where it was a very public thing. And for me, it was always a struggle silently and privately. For this person, it was a public display to get attention. It was attention seeking. A, a, a suicide tour? Yeah. Yes. I'm, what oh, is yeah. that? The, just uh, do, plotting out points on the map, and I'm going to travel, and then I'm going to kill myself after this. Oh, this is my God. final farewell. And like, I, I wish just, Taylor Swift would go on a suicide tour. <laughs> she literally just pushed Vibbert off. I'm stronger than you, Vibbert. <laughs> oh, bring it on. T Swift's rage is. <laughs> <laughs> And what, what that really was about is I want people to show that they care about me. And I, I pulled this person's partner aside and I just said, listen, I've dealt with this my entire life. The people who commit suicide don't talk about it. Yeah, They're doing it because they want you. They don't know how to say, I need help. Help me. They're doing it and acting out because they need help. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's. It, it's important for people to get help, but it's also important that people who are who are struggling that you don't use that just to be uh, 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 an emotionally manipulative prick. Right. You know, and that's, uh, I, you know, you, you never want to, the boy cried wolf, you know, but, and it clearly this guy, she felt terrible when he actually went through with it because she was at a point where it sounded like he, she thought he was crying, boy cried wolf. Don't leave me. I, and I'm imprinting that on, that's my read of it, oh, and that okay. may not be the case. But like that seemed to be the development of the exchanges. Was there she any... had grown tired of the con? Like you know, it was like the exchanges had tapered off, and then that came up, and then they started the, the exchanges started up again, and it was almost like she had grown tired of being reeled back in by, the, had, by the drama. And they had met online, right? It yeah, was it was virtual, online. completely virtual. And there again, that just shows those people are already susceptible. Whatever. Yeah, susceptible. susceptible. Susce yeah. Still can't speak English to that. You know, yeah, emotional that, and that yeah mental. the turmoil and then that's what that's the actual like mechanism they use to get attention and like mm -hmm. get people to talk to them and feel Cause close to others because they're lonely because they're online oh completely yeah I mean not all online people are lonely but, but the people on forums for video games probably it's a very dark time of my life right yeah. <laughs> so yeah my po my point is that you have to be very careful with this kind of talk it's not to be used. This kind of speech is not to be used recklessly or manipulatively. There has to be some personal responsibility. You, If you are struggling, you need to reach out for help. Mm -hmm. And there's no shame in asking to reach out for help, but there, there is a difference when you're doing it every couple of weeks. Just, you know, people, you know, when you're mani manipulating other people, when you're just trying to, you know, flail as a, as a form of beta male, I, you know, you know what I'm talking about, betas. Way to get that low T up. I know. My T is so high right now. I had a steak last night. I just went to the gym earlier. I'm so full of tea. Um, well, and I think it's interesting also, another thing that's, like, another way suicide, I guess, is men mental illness has kind of broken into mainstream is, like we've talked about before, 13 Reasons Why on Netflix. Yeah, that uh, documentary, that's uh, what was brought up in the uh, one of the articles I was reading, is that's just... 
that is another the, thing. I, I don't know what this is. Explain this so, to me. It's. I it's, can tell. Or yeah. You go ahead. You, you go ahead. Oh, it's a book that was released a few years, uh, ten years ago or whatever, and it, now it's a Netflix series. It's about a girl who kills herself and she leaves thirteen tapes and she gives each tape to each of the people who wronged her. So right. she left 13 reasons why she killed herself. Oh, wow. And they kept and it, yeah, they made it into a documentary. Yeah, and it's, they think that it's romanticizing suicide. At the, at the same time, they think it's, you know, a PSA for mental health or Netflix is just capitalizing off of it. Um, but it's just interesting that this is broken into mainstream, right? And then now this actual this real case. story has broken in. Also, there's a new Netflix, do- uh, not even a documentary, a series out, I watched the commercial for it. Don't know what it's called, but it's about a girl who has like an eating disorder. Hmm. And she, have you seen this commercial? It's really dark. The co- the trailer for the series is her, this girl like counting the calories of her dinner and her parents seeing her at her like mental hospital because she has this, you know, and it's like romantic. I dropped my putty. It's like they're romanticizing it in a well, way. A, that's a real thing. Like the pro Anna community is oh. what they call themselves. Pro, they're pro Anna, like pro anorexia. Right. Oh. And it's, it's a lifestyle decision like wow. being gluten free or that keto. So and it's ju- <laughs> And it's just crazy because these big things are you know that we've all been accustomed to because we've been online for however many years and now it's into mainstream and i don't think people can handle it no it's a it's a look at the dark reality and you know the majority of people don't want that exposure to the dark reality they they would much rather not have to see it you know see and experience it because that makes it like the human elements come out to you and in that in that uh, series the 13 reasons i haven't watched it yet but you mentioned it. it but i want to now because the thing that got me was I didn't realize like that she didn't leave a suicide note to her parents. Nope. They had no idea what happened. And so yet she had left these to all of the people who were sort of instigated her decision to um, kill herself. And then, though, it continues on and looks that all of these individuals were actually dealing with their own issues. right? Issues and, you know, desires of thoughts of suicide and ideation. It was like I said, and I've said this before, but it's. I had mixed feelings about it because part of me, like I'm a very, I consider myself a stable person, but it brings you and it's for anybody and it just brings you to a dark place because it's so upsetting to see like on camera. And so I can't imagine, you know, there's so many PSAs out like saying, if you are mentally unstable, do not watch this copycats. You know what I mean? Mm hmm. So I, can't, I mean, it's, it's everything's amplified, too, because of social media, like with cyberbullying. Oh, exactly. Like these things, because it's a groundswell in two seconds. Right. You know, all it takes is, a, you know, someone broadcasting this out and then mm-hmm. one person to comment, you won't do it. You're just seeking attention. And then in comes a flood of people who hadn't said it, but now feel like they have, they have license to you know continue mm-hmm. saying it. Until it leads to a suicide and copycatting, just like with the new thing out. Mm-hmm. So, so here's—is that what it's called, copycatting? I just made it like. Just uh, okay, I didn't know suicide. that was like a real Copy- term. Yeah, I, I got what you're saying. Like yeah. a murder, copycat murder. Yeah, exactly, yeah. a replica. Mm-hmm. So, I think here's the question for libertarians: uh, This is a free speech case. Um, the implications of this are enormous. But is it mm-hmm. okay? Because he, here's the problem: that here's where I struggle, and I think that a lot of libertarians struggle with it. It's clear from reading these text messages. It's just like Christy Avery said uh, on the on the live stream. How could somebody say this to another person? Um, and there is a total lack of empathy in what she said and what she instructed him to do. And there's a case to be made for incitement here. She is inciting him to harm himself. And how can incitement be legal? It's it's the same concept as yelling fire in a crowded theater. You're you're not you don't have the right to say fire in a crowded theater, according to the Oliver Wendell Holmes thinking, mm-hmm. um, because that's inciting people to panic, which causes bodily harm, which means that people uh, that that rights are violated. Essentially, you're 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 threatened. Your life is threatened mm-hmm. because someone incited. They use their words to incite violence. This girl incited him to kill himself. She was apparently the, the the tipping point for him to harm himself. Now, she had also advocated for him to seek help and spent a very long time doing that. Did those weigh the same to balance out? I mean, I would say that context and timing matters. I mean, if she's saying that at the very beginning versus at the very end. She did. I mean, that's the thing is for the majority of the relationship, she's saying, please get help. I know you need it. And right. you've been talking about it. And she stayed in the friendship, you know, clearly lo- long after she had any interest in doing so. But intimacy means that your words carry greater weight and they had a more intimate relationship versus at the very beginning of the relationship and so she's inciting him to kill himself 
does she not deserve to pay a penalty for that? Are, are words that incite words that are punishable? I think it's, oh, man. It's a good question. Because it is, it, it, for me, it's there's like so many levels to that because then it com- it ranges into the, you get into the realm of, you know, does it matter? You have to start to p- applying con- circumstantial, you know, circumstances to it and then looking for what, you know, trying to read into something you don't have any proof of, you know, because at, at the beginning of the relationship, they're friends and he's admitting he doesn't feel, you know, he's dealing with depression and she's there for him constantly and constantly. Right. And then what she should have done is, listen, I have no long, I no longer want to be contacted by you. And she chose not to do that. She stayed in it because he kept threatening it and wanted to be there to deal with it. I just feel like that, too, shows an element of her humanity because she showed that she was someone who was there for him to help. And then when she just made a, a stupid, dumb decision out of either exasper- you we don't know, she hasn't spoken on it, but because she has just had been tired of dealing with it and feeling manipulated, she just said, do it, do it, you know, go ahead, finish the job. Because if you don't, you know, she just didn't have the adult mindset to how to handle it properly. Right. I, how old was she again when this happened? I don't know the exact. I mean, the girl's in her early 20s. All right. So, I mean, that's still a pretty y- young, formative age. I mean, your brain is, what is it, like 24 Four before it's yeah, done? Yeah. 24, before your 26. brain is, is done really, you know, mind still cooking. And it's a lot to deal with at that age. Yeah. That's a, that's a the heavy weight emotional it. thing. I mean... Plus, you don't really understand life and death at 15. You know what I mean? You think you're invincible. You can't For believe sure. anyone would kill themselves because you can't imagine death. Yeah. No one in your life's past, you know, usually, or mm. it's, that's really impactful. Right. And I think it's it's so new. It's so hard. I, I, the dangers of it are, what if someone advised her to say that? Who's the real initial source? Mm-hmm. Then is that person just as guilty? This seems like a heat of the moment type thing. This is three year relation, text relationship back and forth. But, but but I'm saying like, just get in the car and finish the job. Well, he was doing it. He was in a Target parking lot and had gotten a carbon monoxide machine, and he's like, "I think I'm going to do it." And she's like, "Just finish the job. Get in the back if you're going to do it. Finish the job. Get in the back seat and do it." Like she had just told him to go ahead and do it, and then you know it showed that she couldn't believe he did because she reached out to a friend and was talking about how worried she was that he had actually gone through with it. Right. See, and I heard that she like he like got out of the car at one point and she said no get back in yeah that's what he was like you know because then he was like i'm not you know she he wasn't going to do it and then she said if you're going to do it do it finish the job is what her exact (laughs) words were (laughs) which isn't normal at all right but i the the dangers of, of playing this out are huge it's enormous because it's something where look at george w bush i mean look at a president what your words say what words you use determine the course of history they determine invading iraq they determine right. the rise of isis is he responsible we can cons- you know we hold him responsible for those things and yet he walks free this girl says go ahead and do the job and he orders the authorization of military force so so to play the other side of this she is not putting the knife at his throat she is not the one that is hooking up the carbon monoxide machine he is the one that has the ability to make the choice or not make the choice. And so we're it, absolving him of choice for an, a situation where based on mental state. Exactly right. And so you you cannot take out of the equation. I mean, explain the fundamental principle of libertarian is the non-aggression principle. Correct. All right. So explain that in a, in this context. So the principle of non-aggression words aren't a valid justification um, they aren't force on a, on another individual it's absolute freedom of speech period no questions asked right. words can never be you or you can never use words as a justification for um, def- self-defense or force on another person if you view it as self-defense you're the initiator of force had she gone over and put the hose in his mouth then she would be guilty but because she used her words, she she's not guilty. Right. And I don't even know if she is guilty. I mean, I feel like we're, there's this there's this overwhelming urge because the person this sounds very cold, but this this it, it's like essentially absolving this individual free will. We're saying that at, because of his mental state, 
he was completely de- dependent upon what she said. Right. And that isn't true at all, ever. I mean, granted, you can get to a state of dependency and where of just, you know, you're irrational and not able to make logical decisions. That's why, like, you get not guilty for reasons of insanity. Mm-hmm. But this is this is a guy who was contemplating it and reaching out. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. he didn't have a black a rage blackout where his he doesn't have any re- recollection of what he like, like. We know when a husband comes home and finds his wife, he there are many many instances where that person literally the brain didn't imprint a memory because it was in, so inconsistent with what their actions were. This is something where he was talking to someone, had decided against it, then she encouraged him to go ahead and finish it and do it right, and he listened he made a conscious decision right it's a horrible thing i just don't think she should have to serve i don't think i think she did a a moral crime a humanitarian crime Mm -hmm. i don't think she committed a legal crime only because if we're going to extend it that far this podcast could incite someone the guy that went and shot the republicans if he was listening to a progressive version of this website then they provoke, you know, the podcasts and the news sources he was listening to because he gave them such authority. They are the ones that should go to jail. And if, if Taylor Swift kills herself tonight, that's on me. That's my fault. So. Right. And then uh, it wouldn't need a trial. Jeff would be tarred and feathered and hung up. And yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine? Well, shake it off plays in the background. <laughs> oh, my God. Of course. <laughs> shake off those feathers. You'd have you so many bitches coming after you, but in a different way. With pitchforks. <laughs> uh, I feel like well, people would be a little younger. A <laughs> little bit. Get your ankles. Um, so does it kind of go against the, or go to the tune of if I told you to go rob a bank and you did it, would I be in trouble? You would. You would serve jail for a bet, uh, assisting a crime. Based off of this logic or Conspiracy. in this logic. Okay. So yeah, yeah. See, so she got involuntary. So it wasn't like this was her intent, but someone still died. So it's like if the, this charge is for people, the best example is when you get in an auto accident and kill the other driver. Mm-hmm. Totally, un, you know, unintentional, mm-hmm. did not mean to, someone still died, and so justice needs to be served. So know. And extending it to words rather than acts. That's a big step. Huge. Yeah. And the, and that, the implications kind of are scary. enormous. It's the biggest slippery slope ever. And it's I, kind of scary. So here's, I mean, the, the, a lot of people say, well, you know, they want to deal in his mental illness. Well, we don't know if he was mentally ill or not, you know. So you can't say if he. I mean, obviously, somebody who he was. I mean, he was definitely in a terrible mental position, right? And he clearly had had become. He had become so dependent upon her, um, her thoughts, and you know what she. He was basically dependent upon any attention that she gave him. She had placed such enormous weight; it was like he was at her at her disposal, essentially. And that's uh, that's a dangerous level of codependency for anyone, you know. But I don't know that that's that's not schizophrenia, you know. You're not actually having a different personality, or you're not, um, you know, you're not imagining things or delusional. Well, and I think it's with the left now they consider depression a mental illness, which I mean, I guess it is. But they, but where do you go to clarify what do, you know? Just like people saying, "Oh, I have anxiety," or "I'm having anxiety." You're not having anxiety unless you're actually diagnosed. Just, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And the diagnosis isn't even crystal clear is the other thing. Exactly. You so know? that's where I think it kind of goes with depression, too. It's, oh, I'm a little bit depressed today. Well, well, if someone suffers from chronic depression and kills themselves... Then that's mental illness. Are the people who, if it is an outside party that's responsible for it, are the parents that are under, the parents that didn't ever offer approval? Are they inv- Is it involuntary manslaughter because they didn't ever say you did a good job or we're proud of you? Right. So it... It's pretty dangerous. Yeah, and I know you know some people might say, "Well, that's just ridiculous," but then again, so is the situation. It is completely ridiculous. It was you know she said something she shouldn't have said. Mm-hmm. It's horrible, but the the urge for vengeance in this, in the name of justice, through legal ramifications, is not justified whatsoever. Like I get it. I I want to you know this is the kind of inhumane act you want to take a baseball bat to somebody right to get justice but that's why we have we're you know a national laws not men is it's to resist the urge for these you know primal actions and like this right. these desires for vengeance because if you act upon it it just turns into state of nature where it's whatever whoever has the ability to enforce their will wins yeah mm-hmm. uh, uh, 
you do this and you're gonna have prisons filled with 15 year old kids and right right and they were meanie. Like, you know, we already have cyberbullying statutes, yeah. which I, we shouldn't have anyway. Well, I mean, lawyers are going to be the new bullies because they're just are suing 15-year-old kids and getting on the money. You know what I mean? Exactly, because they know how. Yeah. Well, and here's the thing. Will this go to... Because I'm sure, I'm sure everybody in the world has bullied somebody at one point. Somebody has been the mean kid. Oh, yeah. I haven't. <laughs> right. Except for Billy. Um, right. My work experience with you <laughs> begs to differ. I Fake would, news. Fake, Fake news. news. I would never bully you. So I think it kind of just kind of shows what our society is becoming because I remember, you know, in school, if you were, if somebody was being mean to you and you told them, told them off, you were, in, you were accused of being, of being a bully. Right. You were in trouble. Standing up for yourself was it, bullying. Exactly. And of course, this is a different situation, but it makes me think. You know what I mean? It makes me. It just makes you think. Like it does because it it just flirts. You know, you just have this really desire to to want to do exactly what happened to her, mm-hmm. but you had never you you can't you, with the legal the law being the way it is the legal precedent set and this being cited as an example in the next case in the next case in the next mm-hmm. case, it's at a point where anything you say to anyone might be reduced to a lower sentence. Mm-hmm. You know, well, you didn't specifically commit involuntary manslaughter, but you committed indirect involuntary manslaughter. Right. And then you get into the point where it raises the question. Let's say this exchange happened and rather than telling him to go ahead and finish it, she had not responded at all. Mm-hmm. Read and ignored. Read, read receipts on. She had done that. <laughs> Just left him And he ready. killed himself anyway. Yeah. Is her lack of... Of attention, criminal negligence that spurred involuntary manslaughter because she knew. Is there the is the requirement on you for like to be a good Samaritan? To this person's in trouble, I should be there. Is that the what we want to force on everyone? That's a great point. And it's just like the you know we walked through downtown Indianapolis tonight, and there's the people begging on the streets like hungry. You know, if they die of starvation, is that our fault? Are you you're the guilty party because you didn't. You didn't either direct them. You didn't do anything at all to direct them to a food kitchen, bring them food, or help. <laughs> Shame on you, cat. Right. And so that's the real danger. Is where will this, this go? Is this, but she took a, a specific action, which I get. But what's worse, someone saying that to you, or you being so ignored that even your act of absolute, like last ditch effort in order to get attention from somebody you want it from, goes is so, is so irrelevant they don't respond at all. I would contend that may be worse. Yeah. In a lot of scenarios, rather than being to, you know being told something mean, clearly, then he went ahead and followed through with. I would contend this individual probably would have reacted the exact same way had she not responded. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's then if you want to put somebody twenty years in prison because they didn't respond when you needed them, my God, mm-hmm. that's awful. That, I mean, that's no society at all. Because yeah. that's saying that you have a you are owned by others at all times, mm-hmm. and your attention doesn't belong to you. It depends on whoever needs it. it. I think we have to be really diligent about protecting free speech. Oh yeah, absolutely. Especially as we enter the new age. I mean, Jeff, you're working at uh, Barstool. I mean, Barstool is constantly hit with in this environment a lot of bullshit. Especially the the New York office, Dave Portnoy says a lot of crazy shit. What was the thing that you were telling me that he said one time that he was like, uh, "There's some what is it CBS sixty minute interview or something where they're talking about he made a rape joke, right?" And everyone, of course, lashed out, and he stood up for it. I mean, he didn't back down from it, which was pretty amazing to see. Yeah, which is one of the reasons that we love barstools. Yeah, because guys like Portnoy and Pat McAfee, they just go, "Yeah, I said it." He's, I'm not going to back down. Uh, he's doing what I think the last f- true form of free speech is stand-up comedy, which is kind of under attack right now. But Right. Uh, he's kind of doing what you can do on stage, on a on a bigger stage on the internet where everyone sees it, as opposed to in a theater right. that isn't televised so or streamed online. What? So stand-up comedy, I think, has always been an essential part of – healthy speech in our country I mean, you go back to lenny bruce although lenny bruce wasn't funny at all no lenny bruce was a huge free speech pioneer you obviously have the seven dirty words you can't say on television with george carlin which was a revolutionary case um and it, uh, what is the environment i mean i hear like jerry seinfeld won't go out and do comedy on college campuses i mean i was just at a show the other day where a girl got offended and she 
had to message and say, hey, I just want to let you know. Like, I was really upset with something you said. Like, no. it's like, what? They're making it, the, and the person that said it was making a joke. Like it was, it was a funny joke. Like, right. but they were the butt of the joke, and they felt like they were being bullied, and they wanted everyone to know that they were upset about it. Like, what I, they really felt entitled to again was your attention. Yeah, it wasn't enough that they were offended, and then they're just not going to go back and support you. It's that they demand that they, you know, that they were offended right. by it, and they feel entitled to an apology at minimum. Yeah, or your or your attention at minimum, and an apology ideally. So I and a commitment to never do it again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which so, is oppression. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Quit oppressing me. Yes. Uh, so I, I get told all the time it's a running joke that I look like Rachel Maddow, and like I can either get offended by it and be like, I don't want anyone saying that about me, right? Or I can go, Yeah, I fucking do. Like I look at myself in the mirror, I do. Right. I am much prettier than she is. <laughs> I can see how people get, I can see how people get upset. Like I mean, because it's just a bunch of people on Twitter just like, Hey, you look like, and it's like. They all want to be part of the joke, right? And I totally get it. Like, if I was f- fifteen or however old this kid was, you know what I mean? Like, or if I was twenty-two when I first started comedy and this was happening to me, I'd be like, oh, why is everyone picking on me? I'm like, no, they just don't want to be a part of the joke. It's fine. I'm yeah. comfortable in my own skin. I think a lot of this just has to do with that. And yeah, I think that's that's a huge part of, especially if you're in the media. And I, I don't think a lot of people, I, I, the older you get, the thicker the skin you get. You just go. Yeah, I'm not apologizing. I like, said it. I, I think Kat's about to check her fucking hair in her cell phone again. I was checking like, the comments on if, Facebook Live. Okay, all right. So uh, in three years, she won't care. She'll just right. show up and sit down and be like, yep, we're podcasting. I don't care what I look like. Right. It's called giving up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that doesn't we're- happen? It's like when <laughs> it's like when we were at Sam's Club and I go, Cat, you need to learn to not give so much of a fuck. And that old lady goes, He's right. <laughs> what? <laughs> the greatest moment. We so I'm Chris Bangle. I'm a I'm a libertarian. I'm a berry enthusiast. Yeah. <laughs> we were at we were at uh Costco. We were getting food for the We Are Libertarians pool party. And uh mm. I we were talking about something and she was I was just like, Listen, Kat, you need to give less of a fuck about everything. And this just old lady pushing a cart just goes, he's right. <laughs> I haven't had a period since 1943. <laughs> Listen to that young boy. Yeah, you hung sh- whippersnapper. Oh, God. <laughs> That's very funny. <sighs> um, it, it, and, like, it goes it goes even further because, like, this was one case, right? Well, then you also have Canada who adds, what do they add? They add gender uh, identity and then uh, something else to their human rights code, which right. is like their evolving constitution. If you miss and so if pronoun. you don't use the pronoun, the proper pronoun when referring to the trans, it is a hate crime, and so punishable by law for not identifying them with the correct gender pronoun. And if they take offense and file charges, they you are subject to a criminal offense. Yeah, that's sort of what Jordan Peterson, who the two best Rogan podcast, Joe Rogan. That's what podcast. he's been rallying against. So, yeah. So if I go, hey man, like I always say, hey man, what's up? Right. I, I could go. They to can jail. immediately go and file a criminal offense against you. Absolutely. They are protected class within their their laws and it's a hate crime to do so. That's insane. That is that's in that and that's the state of I think that's the state of I don't want to just blanket say the American left, but like the radical radical like Berkeley tree climbing liberals. They have yeah. given up com- I mean, if you even see some polling like the youngest of the millennial generation have don't even consider democracy the best form. The, well, the the problem is that the people who should be for free speech, the left, the liberals, have ha, a, a large portion of them have abandoned that and have left libertarians allyless. Uh, and, and it's more the conservatives now that are starting to embrace free. It's speech. just the Liberty Caucus, <laughs> like, right? That's it. Right. It's Justin Amash, Rand Paul, and then a couple other stragglers. Equality has somehow become more important than free speech, which is mm-hmm. bizarre to me because y- you can't. I, I mean, you can't have equality without free speech. Cat before. Earlier today, we were talking about the Reformation because Kat and I, we know how to party. And so we were watching <laughs> Get a, it. We were watching a YouTube video about uh, Martin Luther and the mm-hmm. Reformation. So enlightening. Like, I don't know why I never learned anything about that. <laughs> right. Like Martin Luther, Martin Luther did more to free the human mind and, and free humanity from the slavery that was the Catholic Church at the time uh, by just 
printing, uh, translating the Bible into German and releasing it through printed text. The so power of the written read. word, right? So people could read for themselves, right? right. And that, yeah, that's the power of the that's the power of words, you know. And that 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 perfectly that shows you what words can do. Yeah, spoke, you know, written or spoke, but they can make somebody kill themselves. I'll, right, exactly. Oh. That's what I mean. Is like that's the incredible power that you know books idea ideas are what run the world, and you know the thought that. But on this case, it's that, yes, her words were clearly fatal. Right. They were fatal. No doubt about it. The question is, do you want to go down that rabbit hole? Do you, And when we talk about this so often on We Are Libertarians, that you are not guaranteed a right to come home at the end of the day safely. And that the world is a rough place, and it's much less rough than it was 100 years ago. I mean, hell, we have deodorant now. Uh, the the poorest you know. of the poor in the United States have free f- cell phones with you know paid plans and they have at, we thirty percent of food stamps don't go used. As a person who is thirty three, barely just starting to break into the middle class, I would say uh, I have I have a job. I have more food than I need. I have a huge variety of food. I have health care. I have more in my life. I have uh, uh, many many books, many leather bound books. Um, I have air conditioning. I two I, cats. Mm-hmm. I have a better a life. podcast studio. A pod <laughs> fucking cast studio. Right in my own house. An intern. An there intern. isn't. There is no one in the 1950s that lived like this. No. Mm-hmm. H- Henry the Eighth didn't live the way that I live. <laughs> no. He died of gout or f- being fat or something. <laughs> I will not have gout because you know you I can have a go to the you reason. can go to the CVS and get a four dollar solution right that would be fatal to him right my my entire life is better than King Henry the Eighth who lived like a a king at that time you know but, it's right. relative were you banging as many chicks as he was I was not see no mm. no <laughs> you gotta gout, gout or slaying it with <laughs> ra- raw dog and randoms I'll take gout any day, <laughs> any day of the week. <laughs> I don't even know what gout means. Wait, is that when your toes turn green? No, that's gangrene. It's it's like it's like your foot gets fat or something. I don't know. Well, gats got to fix your joints, and the only yeah. thing that, that cures it are I cherry like juice. Something like it's a, it's a it, no. um, you, it's an inflammation. It's yeah, an, I feel like it's I inflammation that. of the joints relieve really terribly. No, I think you do have gout. Now I'm looking at it. Yeah, I think you have gout. It's like your foot blows up or something. I've seen that. Please start telling people you have gout. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, I have gout, scarlet fever. <laughs> I'm cat and I have gout. Uh, I'm cat. I have I have disease to, that killed better the eight. I would love to come to the podcast tomorrow, <laughs> but my gout is starting to act off. It's so bad. I'm having a gout flare up. I <laughs> I tried to get my foot out of the bed, but the gout just is not making it move. <laughs> Obama didn't cover my gout, but he gave me his free Samsung Galaxy. Well, Apple. that's the thing. Is it's it's it, gout. I'm pretty sure isn't gout like given the same classification as, um, oh, what's that female thing that everybody has that they deal with? Like lupus, no, lupus and uh, <laughs> lupus <laughs> and um, fibromyalgia. Uh, fibromyalgia. <laughs> fibromyalgia, lupus, and gout. Unlike fibromyalgia, gout is real. It I, is real. No, is lupus it. real? Because Selena Gomez has that. Yeah, there's... Like it's similar of, to fibromyalgia, It's right? like a bunch of different types of lupus or something. Yeah. So mm. It's very you know, organic, decentralized, <laughs> bottom-up, you know, prognosis. I have gout. I'm Katanagnos. But- <laughs> my name's Katanagnos. I have so much gout. Oh, my gout. I have weak bones. <laughs> I have brittle nails because I have a thyroid condition. That That's true. true yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's so, I mean, it's, it's so funny. So it's it's so funny that we're having this discussion on whether free speech is worth it anymore. I mean, we had today, who was, um, it was a Northwestern professor wrote an uh, op-ed in the Los Angeles Times. And if you don't care, I was going to read a little bit of it. Go for it. So her name is. Don't care. <laughs> is it? You know, I assumed it was a man. Continue. <laughs> I don't understand. It's a female professor. Yeah. <laughs> they don't let them read now, do they? Yeah. Well, and her name's uh, Laura Beth Nielsen, a research professor for the American Bar Foundation, and uh, she wrote in an op-ed. She teaches at Northwestern. Why, for example, did the Supreme Court on Monday rule that a trademark office? Oh, for just for record, the Supreme Court rule. Uh, ruled eight to zero unanimous on a case where a group of asian this asian band wanted to name themselves the slants and trademark it right as a, like you know mocking the racism in it right and the trademark it was contested should they come in and condone allow you know should they deny it or approve it their ability to do it because it's racist It'd be a violate i think of the hatchem well, act 
the Washington Redskins. What's they they got involved with the yeah, case, okay. and so it ended up being a group case because this group of Asians, this band, wanted to name themselves Slants, and the trademark office wasn't going to allow it because they thought it was you know racist. They were violating another law. Well, time to trademark a new uh, name for the podcast. I'm very offended. Welcome to We Are Cunts. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Welcome well, to I Have racist. Gout. <laughs> yeah. We are goutitarians. Oh, <laughs> uh, but so she goes to she goes she opposes free speech. So she goes in to write for the New York or for the Los Angeles Times today. Why, for example, did the Supreme Court on Monday rule that the trademark office cannot reject disparaging applications like a request from an organ band to trademark the slants as an Asian slant eyes? The typical answer is that judges must balance benefits and harms. If judges are asked to compare the harm of restic- restricting speech, a chair co- or core, a cherished core constitutional value, to the harm of hurt feelings, judges will ch- rightly choose to protect free expression. But it, perhaps it's nonsense to characterize the nature of the harm as nothing more than an emotional scratch. That's a reflection of the deep inequalities in our society, and one that demonstrates a profound misunderstanding of how hate speech affects its targets. In fact, empirical data suggests that frequent verbal harassment can lead to various negative consequences. <laughs> Racist hate speech has been linked to cigarette smoking, high blood pressure, anxiety, depression, and post-traumatic stress disorder. Having a podcast. Uh, yeah, all requiring <laughs> complex coping strategies with real-world effects from words. Exposure to racial slurs also diminishes academic performance. Women subjected to sexualized speech may develop a phenomenon of self-objectification, which is associated with easy eating disorders. Right, sugar tits? <laughs> sorry, I have never been sexually harassed at We Are Libertarians podcast. I was talking to Jeff. Oh, Sorry. Yeah, don't assume that he's talking to you. Yeah, how dare you? He's been my sugar tits long. Did I just misgender somebody? I uh, (laughs) wasn't paying attention. You You can go to jail for that. Um, So uh, the KKK can parade down Main Street. People can falsely yell fire in a theater, but they cannot falsely yell fire in a theater, but they can yell the N-word at a person of color. College women are told that a crowd of frat boys chanting no means yes and yes means anal is something they must tolerate in the name of someone else's freedom. I'm in Greek life and I've never heard that. <laughs> uh, you about to. Oh. You don't go to Oklahoma. Uh, <laughs> I'd never heard that. and I usually pride myself on yeah. hearing Be- uh, sexist chants. Be- I missed this one. <laughs> you're, you're like, do you remember the little cheerleader chants that you probably learned as a kid, as a girl cat? I didn't you know, have that part of my childhood. Oh, I played soccer. Like Nick knack, paddy whack, give a dog a bone. Oh, yeah. Uh, tick, everybody. Tick. Right. Rumble. <laughs> oh, I got in trouble because we sold T-shirts for IU Bucket Weekend that said kegs, eggs, and open legs, and people were wearing them to classes and wanted to know like who to get an apology for. Um, <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, and so they say consider all the protections. This woman's basically arguing that the protections that exist on free speech are only for white males. So consider all the protections afforded to soldiers' families in the case of Wester- Westboro Baptist, anti-gay discriminations. When the Supreme Court ruled that in 2011 the church's right to stage offensive protests at veterans' funerals, Congress passed the Honoring America's Vets Act, which prohibits any protest 300 to 500 feet from the funerals. So these negative physical and mental health outcomes, which embody the historical roots of race and gender oppression, mean that hate speech is not just speech. What hate speech is, is doing something. It results in tangible harms that are serious in and of themselves and that collectively amount to the harm of subordination, the harm of perpetuating discrimination, and the harm of creating inequality. She's essentially saying the right, absolute right to free speech is what causes inequality and the real world effects of being told no means yes and yes means anal. <laughs> Sorry, I... It was my senior yearbook quote. quote. <laughs> 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 chirp, chirp. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but isn't that stunning that this is a Northwestern legal... Pr- she's, a, uh, she's a JD. She writes a defense of nuanced restriction, when it should be done, and then says that ver- words are the cause of racial, racial inequality, uh, gender oppression. I mean, and then high blood pressure... <laughs> post-traumatic stress from you know your yes being anal <laughs> interpreted as an yeah. invitation to anal be anally raped yeah uh, i don't know it, it's that's the nature though the point was that's what the nature of the american left is that's what the rab not even the radical liberals that's what most on the left really believe a lot of the bernie bros and those types are of this mindset where they have they have no idea why we have free speech or where that principle comes from and why it's so important. They are like, eh, 
I guess, but whatever. I would rather. I'm more concerned about these inequalities and racial injustices and gender injustices. So, okay, let me get this straight because I feel like I can debunk this in five seconds. So this professor or specialist, whatever, thinks that people um, who deal with racial racial slurs, right, have a lower. What was it? They are. So what happens is you can't yell fire in a crowded theater because right. it incites violence. But you can yell the N word and have a public Klan rally at African Americans, and that just because at that moment you're yelling it doesn't cause them physical harm. The physical harm that follows from mm-hmm. the stress and the anxiety is a real world empirical physical harm, mm-hmm. and therefore we protect yelling fire, but we won't protect those individuals from be, ha, being subjected to being yelled at. And so, so wait. So what about the the effects of positive things? What if something positive leads you to go, you know what I mean? Someone says, hey, have unprotected sex and make a baby because you're feeling good about it. You know what I mean? Exactly. It's the implications that kill all of this. So you know, that it's the extending it out past this specific circumstance. Mm-hmm. So she said that because um, these things are legal that those people no, are more it's, susceptible. No, it's... it's um, it's only for like white it's for the majority so free speech is we grant spe- for people that do the oppressing white males we grant them so they don't have to be subjected to being yell- no one can mm-hmm. yell fire but if we ask them to not cat call women so they're not you know they don't get the anxiety or whatever you know right so that's what i was okay so i just heard that one part where she said it was you're more susceptible to anxiety ptsd and- high blood pressure um all the you know all the Okay. Like, yeah, all those chronic anxiety. Well, just going to debunk that right now. Immediately, my mind went to these places where these like racial and ins- bad things, whatever happen, feel like urban poor areas. Not going to lie. Like if you think about like where is the most racist stuff being said, you automatically think the d- deep south poor areas. Of course, they're going to have those. You know what I'm saying? That's just. What's, immediate- the, what's the argument? You like, So should we prevent them from doing so? No, but I mean, it's just like saying, you know, people who are from areas where there's more racism prevalent, whatever, um, don't have a high sense of education, whatever. It's because I feel like maybe that takes place in the deep south where there's not good education anyways. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so her point would be we protect them. Right. Yeah. We protect them. We won't protect. But and we'll protect them from being from going to see Star Wars Mm -hmm. and someone yelling fire. But we won't protect the black kid in that area Mm -hmm. who's in the school from being called the N-word and all the detrimental physical effects from such. Right. Which is where you walk that fine line of once you create an exception to absolute freedom of speech, it's real easy to categorize it and characterize it as, well, we've already agreed that the principle doesn't matter. Now it's just a matter of degree. Mm. And so that's the danger of, uh, you know, creating these little special protected classes and these carve outs. If you don't apply the law and set an absolute precedent... You open yourself up to exposure where she makes a compelling case. Right. Yeah. It's very, very real. I mean, you, you expose someone enough to, you know, hostile yells or being yelled at, you know, the N-word and a, a sense of fear being uh, instilled because they're too young to understand it or what's going on. They're going to develop real world physical effects. Mm-hmm. The problem is we've already, if you abandon free speech where it's not, listen, they have to deal with it and you have to deal with the fire being yelled. Yeah. Then you need to create carve outs for everybody. Well, the, and this is my final thought on the the free speech. We'll wrap up and then then cover. You want to do healthcare next time since it's so late? No, just give give us a few facts on the healthcare here. Once we wrap up on free speech, I would just say that you you need to be careful about. We have to protect the free speech of Klan members. We have to re- protect the free speech of Black Panthers in the '60s. We have to protect the free speech of every person every under single the single person, and the more. Uh, disgusting and disgraceful somebody is the more we have to protect their speech because they give the the cover for the government to create the mechanisms that start to erode everybody's free speech they they are the catalyst for laws being passed to erode our free speech and so it is incredibly important for us to stand up for people who say and do heinous things if we care about free speech because if we don't we will give the power to the government to take free speech away which is the reason why we have free speech is it was a principle that came about after the treaty of westphalia 30 years war where the habsburgs tried to impart their roman catholicism over the germans the bohemians who were protestants right and so what happened was because the church was the official sanction of the state 
it was treason against the state to speak against Roman Catholicism, and you could be put to death. Right. So by making it where everyone had absolute, the only thing that stopped the Thirty Years' War, of thirty years of this, of killing, and then treasonous acts by saying, "Well, I don't believe that the Pope has is the only person that can talk to you know God," and then making by saying that and speaking out about it, a act worthy of death. This is where that principle arises from, and why we have it. And so abandoning it to accommodate individuals who do, you know who it gives them anxiety is fine as long as you're willing to accept accept in time the majority saying being able to impose this and uh, put it as a part of law that anything you say like in canada i can have you convicted of a criminal offense right that's the danger of i get the the logic behind it and i understand we've made accommodations but if we continue to we're done yeah final thoughts on free speech jeff febert fuck you See, I can do that because yeah. of free speech. And exactly you're alive. Right. Yeah, and I'm alive. <laughs> oh, damn, those biceps, son. You called me fat at the beginning of the podcast. Now you're saying I'm... Hey. Free speech. Listen, I'm fat, but I have great arms now because I've been working out. They're toned. Cat, final thoughts? Sorry, I was just reading the text messages. They released all the text messages from the girl. Um, crazy. Um, right? Insane. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks for having me on. Yeah. We're not you... wrapping up. Just oh, okay. sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Just, so just on this I issue. Was, I, yeah. On the issue, Come yeah, I think everything is a double. There's two sides to every story. Um, I definitely agree, though. You have to pr- protect free speech and stop. Just because something could be hate speech, it doesn't mean that it's... We just saw it turned into law to call me she. I could go, if I, we lived in Canada, mm-hmm. and report you for gender misidentification and be a criminal act. And I think we need to stop. Just because something is hate speech, um, we need to stop making... Yeah, hate speech is horrible, but that shouldn't be illegal can i come can I you come know. back to me on final thoughts i was not terrible i don't condemn it but uh, still. Oh, yeah mm-hmm. we're not wrapping up yet we're just no, no 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 no. i meant for on free speech Go, i wasn't yeah. ready so i just said gotcha. i put spangled down when i don't know what to say i just put spangled <laughs> down <laughs> right right it's my default setting free speech it's always running in the background when i need it jeffrey as a person who is in the public eye uh <laughs> no all the time people send me hey fucking kill yourself like you're the war like you know what i mean it's like in words of encouragement yeah and it, it, I just don't understand how someone could take it so... Even when I've been in my worst state and I've gotten tweets like that, it's like... I don't know. Uh, it just doesn't make much sense to me. Right. And yeah, that's the point. Is th- That's the thing. Is I can't... I. Yeah, even in my worst state, I can't put myself in this kid's shoes. I just don't get it. I don't understand it. I guess I'm too vain. I'm like Spangle. I'm too vain. Yeah, yeah and that's that was Some the nuance like of this that. case. Is This guy clearly valued what her opinion so much like yeah, the way that carried was huge I, I just i don't i don't know i don't get that i'll yep. never understand it I, that's kind of what i've been kind of quiet i just don't get it i don't understand it at all yeah when you're as alpha as i am i don't understand <laughs> and then you're just you're just some guy with an egg avatar in your shitty twitter <laughs> yeah. profile right. all these eggs with your taylor Salty. swift conspiracy links oh. <laughs> 15 followers Ugh. Uh, that should you kill, kill yourself, yourself. Kill yourself. <laughs> honestly no but i i definitely agree just it's like just because hate speech is bad doesn't mean that it shouldn't be protected i guess in a way right yeah i can you can condemn something from a moral perspective without needing to legislate it exactly Exactly 